lot about the importance of creating an inclusive environment in the workplace to make sure diverse voices and perspectives are represented in business. But figuring out how to do this, which policies to implement, can be a bit confusing. You may not know where to start. One company that has been able to do this successfully is Freshwork Studio, a software development company in Victoria. Lexi Mills is the company's resourcing and talent acquisition expert, and she joins us now. Lexi, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. So tell me about Freshworks. What does the company do and where do your employees come from? Yeah, so Freshworks is a service-based company. We develop custom web and mobile apps for private and public sector clients. And we are super fortunate to have both of our founders actually have immigrated from India. Uh, and now we have team members from all around the world coming from 18 different countries around the world and speaking 30 languages. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So, you know, inclusivity really does play a big role in your company. I mean, it was kind of founded on that, right? So what does it mean for you and why is it important? Yeah, such a great question. I think the topic of diversity, inclusion, belonging, it can feel so daunting for a lot of companies, especially when they're starting out. I know at Freshworks, we have a really strong importance around inclusion, not just being about people from different parts of the world, but also being about different ages, different genders, people coming from different religious and cultural backgrounds, even personality types. And we found that this has really built a strong company culture of belonging. It doesn't only work well for our own working practices, but it actually ends up benefiting our clients as well to have team members with all of these different diverse perspectives uh, coming in uh, into their work. So break that down a little bit for me. What exactly is the benefit of having a diverse workforce like that? Yeah, so I think understanding different communication styles, understanding different accessibility um, factors. So for example, in Freshworks being an application development company, oftentimes we are or our users are gonna be all different kinds of people and having these backgrounds from different countries, having these backgrounds of different family lives, for example, we actually have found it to be incredibly beneficial for our team members to contribute ideas from their home life or maybe factors that we hadn't have considered, um, especially lately around accessibility. Right, now you've taken a close look at traditional hiring practices, so that's everything from job descriptions, location, qualifications, and the interview process. What have you changed to make sure you're hiring diverse employees? Yeah, uh, again, I'm going to go back to it being really hard for companies, especially a small company, uh, when you're just getting off the ground to tackle this huge question of inclusion. Um, something that I would pass along is the best thing you can do early on that's not gonna cost a company anything is just to be transparent about your process. So when we're sending that initial email communication to a, a candidate, we always let them know exactly the steps that they can anticipate, and then they can make that decision on if they have the skill set, if they uh, are comfortable with the steps, if they can put the time in based on you know their family or other work requirements. Um, so that would be a great place to start. And then to follow that up, we have made sure that we have uh, four different steps in our hiring process. And so once a candidate has gotten to that offer stage, they would have met with between six and 10 different members of the company. These, as much as possible, are team members and interviewers that come from all different levels within the company. They are different uh, genders. We always make sure we have males and females on the team. And we also really make sure we have interviewers that are different ages in the company as well, um, so that we really get, again, that diverse perspective, not only to make sure that, you know, the candidates are really good fit for us, but at the end of the day, we really want to be a good fit for the candidate and want the candidate uh, to know what it would be like to be a part of our team and the different kinds of people that they might get to interact with. And I understand before you even get to the hiring process, you actually have changed the way you, you, you put up those job postings. So if you could tell me a little bit about that. We have. This is a work in progress, I will be honest. Um, but yeah, we've made a really uh, intentional decision to take out any kind of university um, education requirement. So we do have software developers, for example, uh, that they are self-taught, they've done coding boot camps, and we've seen all these different kinds of learning styles come together where maybe coming from a computer science university background, they would have the theoretical knowledge and those coming from a boot camp would have the more hands-on practical knowledge and different set of communication skills and styles. So that's been a huge mark for us is taking that initial 
initial barrier away. Something else we've done is, while we have suggested qualifications, we make sure that that's not the grunt of our job descriptions. And instead, we've actually broken all of our job descriptions into goals. So instead of just looking at this huge list that could be daunting for a candidate and maybe a barrier to them applying, we have based on your background, would you be able to accomplish X, Y, Z at 30 days, at 90 days, and at a year? And that's been incredibly helpful um, for candidates, as they have told us and passed along, um, to not maybe have that anxiety about applying for a job that they otherwise might not have felt qualified for, but totally have the skill set for. I'm curious, was there anything that surprised you in overhauling that traditional hiring process? processes? Did you run into any challenges? Was something easier than you thought? <laughs> I think the most surprising piece was how um, excited and how passionate candidates were about us making this change. Uh, they were, they really felt like um, through our conversations, it set a standard within the company that we weren't looking for fancy backgrounds or a piece of paper to show us someone's skill set. We're really looking for potential, for collaboration, for humility, for all of our core values that aren't always going to be shown on a piece of paper. Uh, another practice that we've put into place is actually trialing, posting the exact same job with different titles. So for example, example, a financial controller versus a financial manager. And we actually found that we have completely different sets of candidates that applied. Uh, and we've been really successful this way in actually getting some of these candidates on board that maybe didn't feel like they were qualified for a manager title. Um, that one's been super pow powerful for us. Okay, now once you've hired these diverse candidates, you need to keep them. So how do you support your team day to day to understand and honor diverse cultures and perspectives? Mm -hmm. It's a huge focus for our team, honestly, and one of my biggest personal learnings has been that inclusion doesn't look the same for everyone. Inclusion and belonging don't look the same for everyone. So one of the policies that we put in place, which I was excited about but didn't know that would make such a big impact, was our STAT holiday policy. And so again, we have team members in 18 different countries around the world, and so this policy that's been put in place has allowed for these team members to substitute one of the Canadian observed holidays for a holiday that more represents their religious or cultural background. Um, I thought this would be a nice to have, but I'm shocked at how many of our team members felt that this was hugely impactful. It respected their own culture, their own family practices, and we've had so many people so far take advantage of substituting maybe Christmas for a day that felt more appropriate for them to spend with their family and honor their own holiday. That's really interesting. You know, inclusive hiring practices, of course, is important and has benefits, but sometimes businesses just don't know where to start with that and how to implement it. Lexi, thanks for taking the time to explain how you've done that and what value it's brought to your company. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much.